Did y'all hear him flirting? You can tell he just really want to be a Baltimore Raven so bad. Listen to this. Well, he's who I, I mean, I, I think I mentioned it to y'all. I don't know if it was this year or last year, but going into my 21 season, I felt like that was an area, uh, broken tackles was an area um, that I re really wanted to focus on and push and, and make better. And I was literally finding myself watching Lamar Jackson highlights. Like, I can't blame you, my friend. We all been like, there. Dude changed the game. Um, he's the best. I'm, in my opinion, best ball carrier um, ever. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my brace. No matter what position you want to talk about, I don't think anybody's as big of a threat to carrying the football. Mm -hmm. So that's true. And obviously, he can. He, you know, he's worked really hard to develop in um, the other parts of his game as well. And you've seen that come come a long mm -hmm. way too. So um, he's a he's a, a huge threat. Somebody you got to take account, be accountable for out there, and make sure you know what what he's doing, and you know, getting on the on the film of that. And obviously, I don't have to worry about that, but. Um, yeah, he's a hell of a football player. So Devontae Adams with some high, high, high praise. Higher than 420 for Mr. Lamar Jackson. We love it. We love what he said. He called him uh, the best ball carrier ever. I don't think anybody's as big as a, of a threat carrying the football. But Devontae, I ain't, I ain't dumb. I, I know what you're doing. You think you're being slick. What he's doing. He's playing a mind game with the Baltimore Ravens. He's doing two things at the same time. One, he's playing a mind game because he's trying to boost Lamar up. He's trying to make the Ravens feel good. So they come into this game like, oh, yeah, I'm the best ball carrier. Oh, yeah, we got this and that. And he's trying to puff them up with pride. That's a no-no, Devontae. I see right through you. You ain't slick, my friend. Now, Baltimore Ravens got to stay humble. Stay humble. Do not overlook the Raiders. Take care of business. But on the flip side, on the flip side that we really want to talk about even more is that Devontae Adams is basically saying, please, Baltimore, come get me, help me, save me, rescue me from these Raiders. I don't want to be here no more. I want to be a Baltimore Raven so bad. And the reason that he's saying that is because, like, look, look at the situation. Think about it. He went from playing with Aaron Rodgers, and he was doing his thing over there. Obviously, that's how he became Devontae Adams. Hello. And then he went to his old uh, high school quarterback, uh, excuse me, college quarterback, my apologies, Derek Carr. And he it was anticipating playing with Derek Carr, and he did play with Derek Carr, but then Derek Carr got sent packing because now he's over there in New Orleans. And shout out to them, they just got their first win last week. Uh, we'll see what they do this week. Uh, but he's here with Gardner Minshew, and it's just not the best situation for a Devontae Adams. Now, there were rumors that came out and said that he was unhappy with the Raiders. He addressed those rumors and said, no, 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 that's not true. But Devontae, really, you think we believe you that those rumors are not true? He, he wants to be a Raven so bad, you could just tell, man. And look, Devontae. I'm all for it. If my team, if they come and get you, my friend, I'm all for it. It's funny. We had a question from subscriber a couple of days ago. that Somebody talked about the, the Baltimore Ravens. They should trade for somebody like Devontae Adams. And I almost had to slap myself today because I was thinking about that question while I was on a walk. And I was like, man, Devontae Adams, when I, when I questioned their question, and their interest in Devontae Adams, I was like, how good of a fit would he be with these Baltimore Ravens? Because we know he can do all the on-script stuff. We know he can do all the on-time stuff. But then I thought, what about the off-script plays? Because you know that's what Baltimore Ravens do a lot of. But then I said, wait a minute. While I was on walk today, I said, oh, my goodness. He played with the most on-script slash off-script quarterback that there is. That being Aaron Rodgers with the timing plays, the back shoulder throws, all that stuff. We know Aaron Rodgers is good for it. But also, when a play breaks down, we know Aaron, well, Green Bay Aaron Rodgers. But New York Jets Aaron Rodgers, I don't know about that one. But Green Bay Aaron Rodgers, he was also good for that. So Devontae Adams, oh my God, you would fit right in with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, a question that we had yesterday from my guy, BB, and this was such a great question because he brought out such a great point. He said he feels like the Baltimore Ravens, they rely too much on the off script stuff when it comes to Lamar Jackson. And I said, oh, my goodness, that is such a great point. So they do need to incorporate and have more 
on time stuff when it comes to him. It can't just be, all right, the play breaks down. Lamar, go figure it out. Go freestyle, everybody. Wow, we do know those are the players, the, the players who can figure it out when stuff breaks down. Those are the ones that he really got the best connections with because we saw it with a Hollywood Brown. We saw it with a Zay Flowers. We've seen it with a Mark Andrews. More recently, we've seen it with an Isaiah Likely. But that's been a problem. A lot of the Baltimore Ravens' original plays, they break down. And, I mean, look, either way, playmakers are going to make plays. But Ravens need to get some on-script stuff, too. Now, back to Devontae Adams. How would he fit in with us? Well, he's somebody that knows how to get open. That, that's his thing. He loves getting open. He loves making plays. And again, we talked about the on and off script stuff. He's a physical wide receiver. He's a veteran wide receiver. He knows the game in and out. Now, I know what you're asking. What would it take to get the Devontae Adams? Well, Raiders ain't really give up nothing for him. And they looking like they rebuild it anyway. It, it, something came out that the, um, the, the 49ers are actually interested in Jacoby Myers. So, look, all these Raiders receivers like, look, it, Come get me. Get us out of here quick, fast, and in a hurry. So I think if you give up a second-round pick, okay, cool. You give up a third-round pick and check, okay, cool. You give up a fourth. Look, you. I know Ravens fans, we love to hold on to them first-round picks, and I get it. But you ain't even got to worry about that first-round pick. You ain't got to worry about it. I, and honestly, a second-round pick, I don't even think you had to worry about that. I honestly think, especially for what he was traded for, that you could get Devontae Adams for a third or later, really, man. I, I, I really believe that. But we will we see? Hey, we'll never know. Now, I know another thing that Ravens fans are going to say. They're going to say, what about the offensive line? Engraven, how he's going to get passes thrown his way if the Baltimore Ravens can't even block for him? And that is a great question, and, and, and I respect that question, but I knew that question and know that question was on its way. Well, how will we address the offensive line? Two different ways you could address it. One, you could leave it as is. Now, we know the offensive line, they cannot get any worse. They can't get any worse. Daniel Filele and Voorhees, those were where the offensive line struggled. They will net, well, they shouldn't, but they will never have a worse start than that. They should never have a worse game than that, and they will never, ever, it's impossible, for it to be their first start at those positions ever again. That, so that was their, their first game at guard for Voorhees and for Filele. They can only go up from here. And if they can't go up, then the Ravens can make some moves. But my point is that if we were to trade for Devontae Adams, and if the Baltimore Ravens trade for Devontae Adams, ooh, it would be over for the league. It would be a wrap. It really would be. But it would not mean that, oh, we traded for Devontae Adams. We can't do nothing. It, it's over for us. What? That's the only move that we can. No. No. It don't got to stop there. Think about this. Cause I know a lot of Ravens fans, they do it. They say, oh, if you trade for a receiver, you can't get an offensive line. No. That's false. And if you want to talk about money, you can restructure some contracts. You already know. But anyway, flip to the defensive side of the ball. Let me show you something real quick. The Baltimore Ravens on their roster going into the draft, they had Marlon Humphrey. They had Brandon Stevens. Uh, they had re-signed Arthur Millette. They had Ardarius Washington. They had Jalen Armour Davis. They had Pepe Williams. And I know there's probably somebody that I'm missing. But what did the Baltimore Ravens do? After having that going into the draft, you see this one, two, three, four, five, six. They went and drafted a Nate Wiggins. They went and drafted a TJ Tampa. They also signed Kadir Holman. Uh, they also brought in Dale Worley. Like, so the Ravens continue to add to something that they already had. Ooh, boy, the Ravens ain't stopped there, though. They also went to some other positions. They had brought back a Kyle Vannoy. They obviously had a Dolph Fairway, picked up his fifth-year option and all, got David Ajabo, got Tavius Robinson. What did the Baltimore Ravens also do? They said, you know what? We could use a little more pass rush. They drafted Adisa Isaac. They drafted Adisa Isaac. Another thing they did with the Baltimore Ravens, they had a Kyle Hamilton. They had a Marcus Williams. They had an Ardarius Washington. We put him at safety and corner because you know he can play both. They went and signed an Eddie Jackson. They went and signed a Daryl Worley. And, and then in a the draft, they still dra they drafted Bo Bray. Oh, excuse me. They drafted Sanusi Kane. And then they went and signed undrafted free agent, rookie free agent, Bo Bray. So the Baltimore Ravens, they piled it on. They really did. So I say all that to say this. 
it's not one position or the other. It can be more than one. It really can be. So, because they do it on defense all the time. On offense, it would not have to be a receiver and no offensive line at all. No. You can find your offensive lineman. Hopefully, they can be built from within. But, hey, if you want to go find one, no problem. So, Devontae Adams, I see your cry for help. Devontae Adams, I, I, I get exactly what you're doing. Devontae Adams, I know exactly why you're doing it. Now, in this game that you got coming up against, uh, in a couple of days against our Baltimore Ravens, I know you're going to do your thing. I know you're going to make your plays. If you have a quiet game, no worries, because if you have a quiet game, I know you'll do it intentionally with the hopes of dropping your value. So it'll make it easier for the Baltimore Ravens to come coop you up. So I get what you're doing. Or if you decide you want to put on a show, in a losing effort, that is, but if you still want to put on a show, you'll just be wanting to show the Baltimore Ravens fans what's soon to hopefully come. So team, keep it clean. While we don't know what the actions of the Baltimore Ravens will be when it comes to Devontae Adams, one action that we do know that you can take is making sure you subscribe to this channel, turn your notifications on, and then leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button because it helps out the channel a lot. Another thing you can do, another action you can take, is hit up Heart of the City Clothing for your revenge season hoodie because that's what it's all about with these Baltimore Ravens this year. It's revenge season. They got to get revenge on the rest of the league. They need to get revenge on themselves for how they performed last year in the AFC Championship too. But it's revenge season for the Ravens, so get your revenge season hoodie. And when you do, off your entire order, you can get 20%. 20% off your whole order. So the more hoodies that you order, the more money you'll get off. So in order to do that, you use code ENGRAVEN20 for 20% off your entire order. You'll love the hoodie. It got revenge season on the front. It got all the games and all the names of the teams we're going against on the back. So y'all go to the link in the description, hit up Harder City Clothing, and tell them that we sent you. Now before we continue, special shout out to Bailey. That came from Mark, by the way. Now, we are at my favorite part of these videos where we feature questions from you. Questions from Team Keep It Clean, whether about the NFL or about the Baltimore Ravens. I love it. Now, if you want to be part of this, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons who have VIP access, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com. If not, that is a okay. First question came from my guy, Javo. He said, I'm so ready for this Raiders game so fans can stop talking about the Chiefs game and bashing our players. You'll think we lose to the Panthers. Now, watching these teams with a great offensive line like the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Browns, the, the Browns. Hey, Browns, man, look at them. Oh, no, <laughs> But anyway, uh, Cowboys and etc. Plus, watch them spend money to get top players and keep them like the Eagles and Cowboys who just signed Lamb, Dak, Diggs, and about to sign Michael Parsons to a max contract. Oh, you must be watching some NBA, huh? He said, my question to you is why can't the Ravens do this? Well, they can. And they do sign a good amount of their players, like obviously Lamar Jackson, even though it took him fighting and clawing and scratching. He had to do everything and more to get his contract. And he owns some other quarterbacks. They ain't had to do it. But, but anyway, they did sign Lamar Jackson. Um, they did sign Mark Andrews to the top of the line money. They signed Ronnie Stanley. They signed Marlon Humphrey. They brought in uh, Marcus Williams. Uh, they just signed Justin Matabike. They also have signed Justin Tucker. So they signed, um, and they, they brought in the Derrick Henry. It wasn't for no crazy amount of money or nothing, but. So they signed a good amount of their players. Um, but with the Baltimore Ravens, I, I think the way that they spend the cap um, is, is just different from a lot of other teams. Uh, what the Baltimore Ravens do, and this is, part of it is a good thing, uh, I think they focus on depth. I think that's what they do. They focus on having depth, having some decent quality depth to where some positions are not necessarily very top heavy it all depends on the position now of course um obviously speaking about wide receiver because that's really the only one really uh every, so usually a, a lot of other positions um and then this year is offensive line you're spending money on ronnie stanley but the rest of the offensive line is uh crazy cheap for now tyler linebound price is just going to go way up um but wide receiver is the position uh, and running back too. They didn't really spend no money on running back. There, again, he while they did pay him, he isn't he ain't close to no top of the league, anything like that. As far as pay, play now is a different story. But I, I think the biggest question is probably you thinking of wide receivers, because uh, there's a lot of other position at the Baltimore Ravens they have paid, um, and they do pay. 
but wide receiver is the one where it's like, no, we ain't doing that. It ain't happening. Even I remember the, the last time where it was looking like, well, they did pay Odell Beckham Jr., but that was like a one-off. But the time before that, where it was looking like they were really going to pay a receiver, it was Ryan Grant. And they got burned with that one. I mean, they I mean, they didn't even get burned. They just they regretted it instantly. That's why they, they made up some, like, injury about him. Oh, you didn't pass a physical. Oh, we found this on a physical. Something. So, okay, really, Ravens? I mean, I'm, I, I remember when they first signed. I was so mad. I was so upset. I was so upset. I'm like, really? This is what you, this is what you want? But anyway, uh, continuing, he wasn't even done with his question. He said, why didn't the Ravens take advantage of Lamar Jackson's rookie deal like the Texans are doing currently with C.J. Stroud? Oh, that's such a great question. And that's something that we've gone over on here a lot. I wish, 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 wish they really would have done that. They didn't, though. They, they, they squandered it. They really did. There's so much different routes they could have taken, so many different angles they could have taken and done so much better. We're really getting the most out of him. But, I mean, you know how that goes. Anyway, he said, another thing is fans saying trade for Adams or another receiver. And I'm like, why? Oh, my goodness. The timing of this is perfect. Because that's what we started the video out with. Oh, I loved it. I love this. Anyway, he said, uh, we need a line. We got weapons, and Mahomes won last year's Super Bowl without a top wide receiver, just role players. What are your thoughts? Oh, I love it. I love it because it goes directly against what we were just talking about uh, at the beginning of this video. Same thing I've been saying about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Do, they they should have done this already, but do what you can do to get the absolute most out of Lamar Jackson. He signed here, so he's going to be here for a while. I'm sure he's going to finish his career as a Baltimore Raven. So why why not really really go in for Lamar Jackson? Like I said earlier, he, he see he's I, I knew I knew it was going to be on the way. But he said, uh fans saying trade for Devontae Adams or another wide receiver, and I'm like, "Why we need an offensive line? It ain't got to be one or the other." Lamar's inconsistency going all the way back to college. Next question came from my guy Juan. He said, what's going on, Engraven? Love the channel. I watch daily. I hope you and the fam are doing well. Appreciate it, Juan. Thank you, man. He said, now to this ugly topic I cringed looking into. Uh-oh. He said, I went through Louisville Records while Lamar was there and saw their 1-3 in three, uh, bowl game record. Is Lamar just not good in big game moments? I wanted context, so I went and watched the highlights from those three games. What I saw shocked me. I feel it looks a lot like what we see now. Him running the ball like crazy, throwing interceptions, and not being able to capitalize on game-winning drives. There are other factors in those games, but the point is, is Lamar just inconsistent in any postseason football he plays? That's interesting. Interesting thing. Now, you did say you watched the highlights, not the whole game. Sometimes the whole game tells a different story than the highlights, but that's cool. Now, um, one thing with Lamar Jackson, one thing that I heard a lot of when it came to Louisville and the receivers, the weapons over there, was that obviously Lamar Jackson did his thing, won the Heisman over there, should have and could have won two Heismans, but that's okay. But the talent around him was nothing crazy. The, 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 the skill position players around him, um, I, think, I don't think any of them got drafted, um, and it's just, it was rough. Now, not, obviously not saying that's the end-all, be-all, but in the biggest moments, in the biggest games, you, you, you want the people around you to, to, to come through. Now, again, Lamar does definitely play his part now, too. And for the college games, I, I can't speak on that at all. I, I, I can't speak on that because I did not see them. I did not see his bowl games from college. But um, we can speak on what we've seen in the pros and if you look at the context, it seems to be the same exact scenario happening every time. Minus 2020, because that's when he left the game with the concussion. But if you go to 2018, it's the same issue in 2018 that we had with uh, Marty Morningweger's offensive coordinator that we had in 2019 with Giro as offensive coordinator that we had in 2023 with Todd Munkin as offensive coordinator. There's one common denominator. There are three different offensive coordinators, but all of them have the same issue. And the issue was going away from what works or the issue was with the play calling. Number one, uh, in 2018, Lamar's rookie year, that playoff game uh, where we went against the Chargers. We had just played them a couple of weeks prior. And the Ravens were doing the RPO, the read option and all that. They were going crazy with it during the regular season. Okay, great. That's amazing. So first quarter, they were trying to go crazy with it. It wasn't working. 
Second quarter, they tried to go crazy with it. It wasn't working. So you would think, all right, halftime adjustments. All right, cool, no problem. Third quarter, they kept trying to do it, and it wasn't working. In the third quarter, and they kept at it, at, kept at it. It wasn't working. So I'm like, why are they still calling these plays? And guess what? When they started opening up the, the, the playbook, they started passing the ball more, opening it up. Oh, the Baltimore Ravens, they actually started moving the ball. And they almost came back. So that was a big issue with play calling right there. 2019, again, number one rushing team. You know the story. And they ain't even run the ball, with the running backs at least. 2023, again, same story. Number one rushing team. You know how it goes. Great defense. Uh, don't even run the ball with the running. You know how it goes. So the issue, I don't know if it was like that in, in his college days, so I can't speak on that. But the same issues keep happening in the pros under different offensive coordinators. But it's not like, all right, hey, Lamar, man, you out there being terrible. You out, you out there just playing. But it, it's, it's starting at the top. It's starting at the top. Is Lamar having his best games? No, certainly not. Well, the Texans game, hey, that boy, that boy, okay, two and two, two and two, a little double double, okay, but um, it's it's been starting at the top, over and over and over, and we hate seeing it. We're tired of seeing it. So it's just so that's what's got to improve, in my opinion. That's where it's got to start. It's got to start from the top, from John Harbaugh. Because, again, it's, been, it's the same issue with different offensive coordinators. It's been the same exact issue in the playoffs with different offensive coordinators. Is that a coincidence? Think about it. This next question came from my guy, Martin. And before we get into this question, I got to say I love y'all so much. And I appreciate y'all questions that y'all be sending, the thought-provoking questions, the tough questions, the questions that really make you think. I love it. And y'all send them every single day, all the time. Appreciate y'all. Y'all keep it up. So my guy, Martin, said, I just want to honestly say, I don't think Michael Orr did a bad, oh, you talking about Zachary Orr, but you think about blinds, you think of Baltimore Ravens, but that's the wrong Orr, but I got you. Anyway, he said, I don't, I don't think Zach Orr, who's who you talking about, did a bad job at all. No, not at all. Oh, not at all. He said, I, I know fans look at the score and say, man, Mike McDonald wouldn't have allowed that. Uh, in that same situation, he certainly would have. In his first game as defensive coordinator for the Ravens, oh, yeah, cause again, we remember. We remember, but anyway. Uh, he said, I know fans look at the score and say Mike McDonald would not have allowed that, but 14 of those points came from a third and 20 penalty and a blown coverage. Two things I don't think you can put on Zach Orr, but subtract those 14 points, the Chiefs would have only put up 13 points. But I'll say the Chiefs would have got field goals instead of touchdowns. That's still only 19 points. I swear, man, we'd be panicking immediately, LOL. Like, let's say the first pass was a pick six. I swear all the comments in the live feed will just say season over, good game. See you guys next year. I mean, you know how people are. And that's okay. It's football. It's the first game of the season, so we all jittery. We was all nervous and whatnot. But um, Ravens show, like, no, they're they, they going to be straight. But I get you. That, that does happen. Uh, especially, I, I think for us Ravens fans, it's, it's been different this year, though, because of how last year ended and the, the pain, the heartbreak that last year was, especially because last year was just, it was different because we just knew, at least me, I just knew, Ra oh, Ravens headed to the Super Bowl. Oh, let's get it. Ravens going all the way to the Super Bowl and they winning the Oh, they're the best team in the league for sure. We got this. Everything's lining up in our favor. Oh, we get the playoffs. They got to they come through Baltimore. Oh, MT Banks. Yeah. Oh, we, we on. We got it. And... Yeah, you know how that ended. So Ravens fans, just with that being the last game that we saw the AFC Championship, and then the next game being that same exact team at, at their stadium this time, it, it just it brought back a lot of memories. And Ravens just like Ravens fans just been like, oh, yeah, oh no, I don't want to see this again. So that's why it, it's just frustration. He said, "Just chill, everyone. There is a time to panic, and then there's a time to stay calm." But honestly. In my opinion, this Chiefs game didn't discourage me. I actually feel better about our team. It's a long season, and let's not try to throw anyone overboard yet. Hopefully not. But hopefully the Ravens, they throw some other teams overboard while they stay afloat the ship. 